Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint the lovely blue and white Aquilegia, but you may know it as another name. It's called Granny's Bonnet or Columbine. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous and so let's grab our paints and get started. So we're going to begin with a pencil stem, sort of forking off in the middle there, and we're going to have uh, an open-faced flower here, a bit of a circle, and then we're going to have a curling away one, and because we, it'd be really cool to show this flower just slightly from an angle because it's got a bit of an amazing sort of back backside that you don't tend to see very much, um, and then we'll get some little sort of budding stems in there and a, a leaf or two. Lovely. So there's our pencil drawing and we can pop that to one side again and we can mix up some of our colours. So the flower colour I'm going to do today, I want to create a, a slightly purpley blue, a sort of indigo colour. So I always like to have a few different tones at my fingertips. Um, so I've got Cobalt Blue Deep, this one here, and then this is French Ultramarine Blue. And then I'm going to pick up a bit of Permanent Rose and mix that in there. And then I'll be able to just sort of dab in extra bits of blue should I need them. And then for the stems, it's a slightly yellowy green colour. So we'll get sap green and a bit of green gold mixed together, but of course you can use your yellow tones if need be, if you don't have green gold. So it's very important to get your colours sort of ready, ready prepared. Um, but the other key thing with uh, the Aquilegia or Columbine flower is there is a two layer uh, petal flower going on here and we've got a sort of white flower that sits in front of the bluey petals so what I need to do is mix up a very very pale sort of translucent color um, which the way I do it is I use burnt sienna a bit of Payne's grey or a blue tone and then a tiny bit of a green tone and I just mix that together I'm just very aware that's probably going to suddenly bleed into the blue any second but essentially I've got this which is going to create my white flowers my blue petals and my stems and leaves now I'm all ready to go I've got my size 2 brush which I think should be a good a good type of brush for my petals and I'm going to begin by painting in five petals in this white colour. I'm just going to leave like a tiny sliver of unpainted space up the middle. And uh, this is one of those rare occasions where we can actually paint in the five petals together. Quite often the way I paint is I'll be sort of painting in a few, leaving some gaps and then allowing those to dry and painting the other ones in a sort of overlap fashion. But today, these petals are quite nicely spaced out. So um, they've got a bit of a sort of heart shape, a bit of a dip in the middle. So I'm just creating that shape by sort of doing sort of almost two sides of a, a rather sort of soft heart, allowing the petals to just be anchored in the middle. by that pencil circle and I'm pretty pleased with that and the size 2 brush was great for that. Now I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush and um, there is actually a very faint hint of the bluey purple colour in the centre of those petals. I have I've purposefully allowed to paint all of these before putting in any colour because I really want the, the wetness to just sort of dry a little bit and I'm just picking up a slightly sort of cobalt blue bit of the colour and I'm just going to do a single dab 
there we go for each one honestly you don't want any more than that because it's a subtle bit of color and that will gradually spread it, it will do um, now over here we've got a, a flower that we're seeing from the side a little bit more so I'm going to focus first on the petals in the the background I have one coming straight out and we're going to see these a little bits of more elongated and then I'll paint one sort of trumpeting out from the side so this will be a little bit sort of a little bit squashed and then one on the other side and we are going to allow for these ones to dry uh, before we paint in any more petals because those ones will sort of overlap on them I'll pick up a bit of that blue and we'll let that just dry nicely so whilst that's drying we can focus on our stems so the, st the size of brush you choose is all down to sort of how much control you feel happy with um, but I am going to begin I'm actually not going to paint the bottom there because usually they have lots of leaves sort of protruding out the bottom so I'm going to begin just above and I'm going to first paint in the main bulk of the stem and I'm just going to stop just short and here I'm going to stop just short as well because there's quite a lot that goes on as I said on the back side of a aquilegia flower and now I'm going to move down into smaller brushes and get some slightly thinner stems um, you could use size two tenths I've got a three tenths here <laughs> Oh, your size zero would be great. Anything that just now allows you to do a slightly thinner stem. I wouldn't go right down to um, four tenths. I think that is the kind of brush we save for really small detail. And then we can add a few more branches off these. main branches for our leaves there we go so we're just going to sort of allow that to dry you can see there's little places where maybe the blend didn't quite sort of smooth out so we can just add a little bit of color there but on the whole we've got a really nice base for our stems and leaves so we're just going to let that all dry this is all lovely and dry now it's quite a warm day actually which helps um, and now I've got a size zero brush just for a bit more control and I'm going to now paint in two more petals it doesn't matter if the blue sort of shows up underneath them um, and you can see they're sort of little trumpety shapes and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend the petal with this long curly tail I mean the white paint's probably a bit hard to see if I add a little bit more there because these um, columbine flowers have these amazing tails um, that you don't tend to see when the flower is facing you straight on but yeah it's kind of cool anyway we'll let those dry and we'll move on to our leaves and then we can get back to those shortly so a leaf for this flower um, I'm going to use my stem mix size 2 brush and I'm going to create these sort of softly serrated leaves a little bit like how we painted the strawberry plant last week and I am going to just dab a little bit and just tidy up that side there we go if 
you feel like you want a bit more control, you can go down to a size zero. Um, but essentially, the leaves have got a, a soft serrated appearance. And as they sort of grow, they slightly sort of, uh, sort of club together, they group together. It'll make sense when I painted all of them. And just a dab again. It's just like that technique there. Just if, as long as you've got a, a leaf that is fairly wet and you're working with a, an element of speed, if you sort of see I'm allowing my my leaves to sort of slightly slightly sort of seep into the page and dry a little bit but it is important that I dab in that color fairly fast. And it's also important to say that when we paint our leaf branches these initial stems here we're just painting in the basic sort of number. However, you can then feel free with this flower to add in a few little extra ones. Now I'm getting towards the bottom here and we're going to have some sort of more developed leaves. So I'm using my size 2 brush. And the leaves have gone from these three sort of separate things to three slightly more sort of bulky, bulky leaves that have grown up in their own right. Okay, so that's looking really nice. Let those dry before we do any detail on those. And now we can return to these. Now I am just going to change my water over because it's a little bit green now. And I can get back to this lovely bluey color we've got here. I'm going to use my size zero brush and I'm going to paint in a petal just sort of in between each of these white petals. So using first that little dip in between them and I'm going to paint a much longer pointier petal. Now the reason I'm painting this with a smaller brush using more brush strokes is because I just really want the control of this little corner here. Whereas you could paint it in one sort of fell swoop with a large brush, but you wouldn't be able to get the control. So I did just add a bit more cobalt blue deep in there. And now I'll just get in the corner there. It also helps if you want to sort of define the shape of the white petals a little bit more. So I'm just cleaning off my brush and using the wetness from the brush to create a nice 
blended colour, but I also am just adding a bit of stronger cobalt blue. And you might find that some of your petals sort of turn out longer than the others, so you can even them up as you go round. This also shows why we do our stems nice and light to begin with, because if we're painting things over the top of them, they have a fighting chance, and then we can just add sort of deeper, darker detail to the bits that aren't painted over. Okay, so for here, we've got to imagine that all the petals are sort of protruding from this point here, sort of the back of the flower. So they're going to fan out from there. And then we'll also have one that sort of comes out from in between these two tails of the white petal. And at the end I thought I would, I would see if we could add in maybe a few more white petal tails if we feel we can see them. So now I'm just painting carefully around the edges. I can add a drop of deeper blue if I want. And then up around the back, probably seeing one see a fraction of it behind there. And maybe sort of there we go. Now we can add a bit of leaf detail. So I've got my rigger brush which is just fantastic for adding leaf lines. Um, we're not gonna, I, I never sort of go too heavy on the leaf lines, but it's just a really nice thing you can add. Um, so I've just got some sap green, and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of French Ultramarine marine blue, which gives us a, a nice piney forest green. And so the rigger brush is this lovely long bristled brush that I've become very fond of and is also available in my shop, in my Etsy store as well. Um, and I can show you the beautiful control you get with this brush. And it holds so much paint as well, which is the really cool thing. So doing a central line is cool, but then we can also add a few little protruding veins from that central leaf. Just make sure they're nicely sort of steeply angled And the more the paint sort of runs out and dries up on the brush kind of the better because it just means that your lines are going to be really delicate and faint. We've got this one stem here um, which I want to have a bud that's just starting to open. So I'm going to use my size uh, 3 tenths and just 
do a few little tapered lines, a little C curve, S curves. And then get a bit of this nice green. And this is probably the one bit where we'll sort of have a little bit of a, a bleed and a blend. Just completing the bud with some green sepals there. And once that's dried, we can add a bit of detail. Now, we're getting into the final stages, which means we're looking at shadowy bits and details. So what I'm going to do, there is a bright yellow um, stamen filament snanthas in the middle of the flower. But first, I want to add a very dilute bit of shadow just to the petals sort of on the lower half of the flower. And again, I'll do that there. The shadow mix I've used is, is a dilute burnt sienna Payne's grey and it's just really fantastic to allow you to get just a little bit more sort of depth and interest on the flower. Um, it's a very translucent one whereas I want something a bit stronger, oh I've got a bit of a fluff in my paint, um, I want something a bit stronger for shadow on my leaves. So, if we just dilute down the green I was using there, add in a bit of Payne's grey, let's see. So we just, I want to have a shadowy tone that sort of reflects the colours actually going on. And I'll get a bit of sap green on its own as well. And we can use this sort of mix to both sort of place in shadow and also to just find little areas of places where we want to just add a little bit of depth to the piece, a little underside you might want to go, you might want to use your rigger brush for that or go down to a really small brush like the four tenths brush just to have all the control. So it can help blend the leaves just a little bit more. And also some bits where you might just have a bit of a rough edge, you just want to smooth it out a little bit. With a little bit of water, we can just keep it nice and evenly blended. Use it to pick out a bit more definition there. And then added a little bit of extra stem just underneath the leaf there. What you're doing is just connecting everything, making it all feel part of one plant. Okay, so the last little bits are adding in the last little tails of the petals that we might see. So I'm going to imagine that one coming off, maybe seeing a little one there and one there. That's kind of cool. And then we've got the yellow centers of the flowers once I, I just keep finding places to add shadow it's my problem <laughs> right I mixed up cadmium yellow and cadmium orange as well just to give us some extra options and I am going to use this in as opaque a way as I possibly can cadmium yellow is an, a, a more opaque watercolor 
and I'm going to use the circle as my rough guide to sort of dot yellow sort of cluster a haloed cluster or a clustered halo and a bit of orange too when it's facing straight out at you it can just be just dots like that when it is on an angle like this one we can actually look at having the filaments the actual lengths coming out of course we'll be seeing them come out from behind those petals in the foreground and then Okay, going to let that all dry and then we'll rub out the pencil and have a look. Okay, that's looking really nice, but I always like to have one last look at it and um, I'm just going to add a little bit of sap green to the sepals there. And also, just a little bit of green actually to the underside of some of the little anthers. It just really helps them stand out. So it's a little sort of cupping of the underside. And there we have a beautiful aquilegia or columbine flower. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on with this. And if you share your work on social media, then tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, just hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell, and we'll see you again next time.